Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about what kinds of sanders are best for uh, doing finishing work. So as you can see, I've got kind of a variety of sanders laid out here and they've all got their uses. I find them all very useful when I'm doing my like a variety of work that I do here at the shop. But there are some when it comes to sanding uh, for finishing work that kind of, you know, are cut above the rest and some of them just plain aren't useful for that. So. Let's start from the ones that you maybe don't want to use for finishing work and we'll work our way over to the ones that I use all the time for that. First up, belt sanders. Now these are fantastic tools. Uh, people use them for flooring all the time. They're great for removing material quickly, mostly m removing wood quickly, but also paint uh, in some circumstances. And you can get a nice flat finish with this. Uh, and by a flat finish, I mean a flat surface. But you don't want to be using this when it comes to finishing it's not gonna give you a smooth look at the end. It's gonna give you a very aggressively sanded look. These things are great for doing work quickly, but it's not the kind of thing that you're gonna use even for finished sanding, let alone actually sanding a finish. You're not gonna end up with a smooth surface here. You need to move on to a finer sander afterward. Next, I'm not gonna lie, I don't know what this is called. This sander has three rotary pads on it and they can move, they can flex a little bit to match up to a surface. They spin aggressively though. So here's the thing, these are gonna, <laughs> these are gonna tear away at material pretty quickly too. It's, it's interesting trying to shape things with these. You can get polishing pads for these for polishing metal and whatnot, but this again, because of the aggressiveness and size of these surfaces, not very good for finishing work. Sander definitely has its uses, but you wouldn't catch me sanding a finish with this. You also wouldn't catch me finish sanding a piece before spraying or hand applying or brushing a finish using something like this. All right, next up, orbital sanders. Orbital sanders, this is gonna get kind of confusing because I do use orbital sanders for finishing, but not this kind. This is for sanding wood. This thing spins, it doesn't move side to side, it simply spins. It's just a straight up orbital sander. It's not bad for finishing work. Again, I wouldn't use it for actually sanding a finish in preparation for polishing or anything like that. But for sanding wood, you can get a decent finish using one of these. It's not gonna be the smoothest finish that you can get, but it's not bad. Uh, and it does remove material at a reasonable rate. So it's not, it's not fast per se, not like a belt sander, but it's also not slow like the sanders that just vibrate. Speaking of sanders that just vibrate, that's what I've got here. Now this one doesn't spin or anything. Really all that happens is the, the sandpaper, the bottom here, vibrates against the wood. And it's faster than hand sanding because it does that, but it's smoother than an orbital sander because you're not getting that torquing motion dragging the sandpaper across the wood. This is a nice sander for finish sanding wood. Not paint, not for polishing, not sanding a finish per se, I mean, you can use it for that. It's better than the options that we've already seen, but it's, it's a really good sander for finishing, or finish sanding rather, wood itself. Uh, so this is something that I think everybody who does, you know, general finishing stuff should probably have in their shop, uh, unless they wanna do their finish sanding for wood with a random orbital sander, and I'll show you that uh, shortly. All right, so here we have a dual action random orbital sander, uh, one style of them. You can kind of get a handle on what style it is. This one's got a weight on it here that spins around and the, um, the pad will spin and also oscillate with that weight. So it's kind of doing a couple motions at once. It's moving around and it's twisting. This one is a stick on pad. And this sander is not bad for finishing. It's, uh, it's a little bit aggressive, this style. It's not as easy to control as some. It's good for doing a, a smooth finish on like a door or something for a car or on a flat surface. Gets you a nice smooth flat surface. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily use it for, you know, polishing applications or stuff like that because it is a bit aggressive, um, but it works well. Usually these types are used for like sanding metal, that kind of thing, sanding body filler. Uh, it's pretty good for that sort of stuff. Not my favorite for getting into curves either because it's a little unwieldy and it doesn't really flex. Here we have another random orbital sander, dual action. Again, this pad, hopefully you can tell there, is spinning 
and moving up and down. It's also, it doesn't have the same kind of torque that that other one had. So if you're pushing, it's not gonna keep spinning if there's resistance against it, which prevents you from like gouging in, taking too much material off. It's good for finishing. This is a, a basically a finishing sander. You can use it for finish sanding wood. It's designed more for finish sanding, you know, filler and, uh, and finishes and stuff like that. Works great for both though, in my opinion. This is not my favorite uh, for finish sanding because, for merely because it's a, a stick-on pad. So it's kind of a pain to change back and forth and your pads don't, you can't just keep sticking them on all the time and have that stickiness last. So that brings me to my favorite style of sander for finishing work. Essentially the same thing. If you follow my channel, you've probably seen me use this one many times. Dual action orbital sander moves around, spins, not very aggressive. You can change the air settings on these ones. These are pneumatic, whereas the ones that we were looking at at the beginning of the video were electric. But you can change your air settings on this and the last one that I showed you, and I think the one before that, to make it more or less aggressive. Uh, mine are set around half. So if I push down a little bit, if I add a little bit of pressure, it's not gonna keep spinning. It's not gonna tear away a bunch of material. This one's got a nice soft pad on it. The other one kind of did too. That helps you get into edges if you need it, into, into uh, curves, things like that. It's very controllable, as was the last one. Fits in the palm of your hand. There are lots of sanders out there like this. The thing that makes the biggest difference between this one and the last one for me is that this one's hook and loop, okay? It's stuck on there just by Velcro, essentially. You buy hook and loop sandpaper for it, so I can peel off and stick on the same piece of paper as many times as I want, which isn't really important for sanding wood as much because I mean you throw on a 220 grit and go to sand a piece uh, to a nice smooth finish you're gonna run through that piece of sandpaper reasonably quickly but I can take my 3000 grit sandpaper stick it on there and I've done that I've used the same piece of 3000 grit sandpaper probably for 20 25 projects now taking it off put it back on it's so fine it never jams up really so that's gonna last me probably for another 20 projects before I have to go and switch to another piece of, of that really fine paper, as long as you don't tear the edges. And those have foam on the back, so they don't tear as much. So this I find to be the most versatile. Now, if I crank up the torque on this one, it can remove material. It can remove material at a reasonable rate if I'm using like a 120 grit or something like that, or even coarser. But it certainly won't be as fast as using one of those sanders that we looked at at the beginning. You can get orbital sanders that have, uh, I think Triton makes one. It's, it's a little bigger, a little more cumbersome, maybe not the greatest for finishing, but it's got the dual action orbital um, option like this. And then you can lock it in so that it just keeps, like the clutch is gone and it just keeps spinning regardless of how hard you're pushing for taking away a lot of material. That's another very versatile option. Again, probably not the sort of thing that I would use for you know, sanding my clear coat down to 3000 grit <laughs> so that I can polish it. But something to consider if you're looking into that. So guys, I hope you found this video informative, maybe even helpful if you're uh, out there searching for the right kind of sander for whatever application you're going for. Again, those dual action orbitals are the ones that I would recommend for finishing work. Um, and that actually includes wood, like smoothing your wood to a nice finished sand and doing your finishing on uh, your actual paint for your finish. So again, hope that was helpful. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up so it's easier for other people to find. And as always, thanks for watching. See you next time.